Moses was called by God to lead the Israelites. In chapter 8, Pharaoh, Pharaoh called Moses forward and he said, Go sacrifice to your God in the land. <laughs> Here in Egypt, Moses said, It's not right to do so. For we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will they not stone us? Now nah, we're going to go a three-day journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he will command us. <laughs> we're going to go to church in the wilderness. I know. We've got Egypt and we've got all this splendor and well, look at the city and big pyramids and it's absolutely gorgeous no we're, we're not sacrificing here we're sacrificing and being obedient God said go three days into the wilderness a lot can happen in three days by the way so Pharaoh said I'll let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness only um don't go very far away. Shut up. Don't go very far away. Intercede for me. Let me see. I'm holding your people in bondage. And I'm asking you to intercede to your God for me. <laughs> Goshen was a place of separation. Goshen is where they lived. Egypt had the plagues. Massive amount. I mean the plagues. But in Goshen, there was provision. There was protection. The children of Israel were sighing and groaning because of their bondage. They kept crying and crying and crying. And I don't know if you've ever had a child that will not stop whining. I don't really give in to the child. I usually set them on the couch and tell them to knock it off. But God heard their cries. He heard their supplication. And he remembered his covenant. Let my people go so they may celebrate a feast to me in the wilderness. <laughs> Pharaoh had reduced them to severe slavery and infanticide. He killed their future. He killed their babies. He killed their sons. From infancy there was absolutely no hope they were in bondage it reminds me of the believers in other countries the bondage that they're under even in China we'll imprison you but if you give birth to a child we'll take the child and rip it limb to limb we will kill your children we will kill your future we will kill your hope and they cry out to God. See, the Jews and the Hebrews had escaped their bondage. They had escaped their op oppressors. They had been rescued and taken out of Egypt by the Lord God Almighty. He had proven himself time and time again. And yet they chose idols to worship. And he said, I'm going to take you into the wilderness. When I heard the Lord say, I'm going to take the church into the wilderness, I freaked out a bit. I thought, the Lord, what does that mean? He said, some churches will go bankrupt. Some ministers are going to struggle. They will not know what to do. Some will lose their ministry. Leadership that was once stable and strong will no longer gather. Many will compromise. Wow. <laughs> Moses was fed up with it all when he saw the people begin to worship idols. He was going to pull back. He was going to recluse himself. He was going to delete his Facebook account. He was going to step out of ministry. He was going to throw in the towel. And God said, no. I actually want you to go and build a tabernacle in the wilderness 
and I want you to get away and I want you to go worship me. God is calling his people to a place that is uncomfortable, a place that you're not used to. He's going to call you out to a place where there's no frills and no fluff. The things you're used to, that church used to, those memories, they're not going to be there anymore. I'm really sorry. Things are going to change. It's going to be you and Jesus. I wish I could tell you what I really know and what I see. And I will try to be very honest. But I see that he's going to strip the church to nothing. And he's going to call those that will worship in the wilderness. They will worship with their whole heart, unabandoned. They will stretch forth their arms. They will gather. And it won't be about who's dressed the nicest. It won't be about the, your social stance. It'll be about, I've got to have God. No matter what, I've got to have God. What we've laid in store in the churches in America won't be there no more. There will be people that find comfort to sit on their couch and watch from a distance. There will be people that will never again gather their choice. But God is calling a remnant that not only will gather, they will purify their heart. They will be intense about God.